So good morning, um, welcome to On The Couch with Richard Duffy and my victim for today's session is Ali Jani and Ali is our Vice President of Services and Support here at Acumatica. So welcome Ali. Thank you very much Richard. Uh, what I'd like to do this morning is just spend a little bit of time talking with you. Tell me a little bit about what you do at Acumatica, sure. what you're responsible for and then I'm going to ask you a few questions about you know services and support and, and how we work with partners and and some best practices is that okay if we do that sure perfect okay fantastic so yes yeah, so my name is Ali Johnny I'm the vice president of services and support at Acumatica I also work very closely and manage the product management team the technical product management team side but primarily my focus is on the partner enablement and partner uh, support and services areas and our goal is to basically make sure that our partners are successful uh, with their uh, with their clients and use of our software and making sure that uh, they're able to succeed. Fantastic. So um, those of you who saw our previous session with Charlie Horton will know that this whole idea of partner success is something that's critical to, to all of us here at Acumatica. So let me ask you, from a services and support perspective, what is it that you think um, makes a partner successful? It's a good question. So uh, part of the whole puzzle here is experience and knowledge. Uh, ERP is a pretty fairly complex uh, solution and especially with us because we produce a P ERP piece of software that is very adaptable to people's businesses mm -hmm. and it can be customized and configured and uh, with workflow engines and other types of things so it can get pretty complex. And each of our partners have uh, fairly uh, vast experience in the past um, managing and, and selling uh, business management type of solutions, ERP mm -hmm. solutions. Mm -hmm. And part of their process is to make sure that they uh, learn the product inside out, know uh, how, how to use it, and to be able to effectively support their clients. So in effect, they actually play first line of support for their customers and because we sell through the channel. And once they install and implement uh, their clients, the methodology that they use is very important. Uh, they do a lot of project management, training, uh, data transformations from, from prior systems. Yeah. And during the, that process, uh, if there are any hiccups or if they have questions or if, uh, if there are certain things that the customer wants to do but they don't know exactly how to configure that in the solution, they may come back to us and ask us for those types of solutions. So they, they live, really look at us as the product experts, right. uh, a, a step above them. Mm -hmm. And so we are uh, really here to make sure we have the technical staff and the experience that uh, helps them get through that hard, those hurdles. Fantastic. So you talked about this concept of you know, ERP uh, and, and you used the word complex. And I think that's a, a lot of people would say, well, gee, you shouldn't really call it complex. Isn't that going to scare people off? But I think it's one of those things you just can't avoid, okay, we're with ERP, yeah. there is a level of, of complexity. But one of the things that I really like about Acumatica is that that complexity um, can be, if you like, not hidden, yes. but can be put behind a layer of simplicity from the, yes. the web-based application. Yeah. What are your thoughts yeah. on that? No, I agree completely. I think that's one of the things that attracted me to Acumatica in the first place is because I like to use the term uh, as simple as, as you need and as complex as you can handle. Right. And you know, when you think of it that way, you know, from an end user perspective and using the software, uh, it can be very, very simple to use. Yes. And because we, in fact, we have a lot of customers that are very growing and rapidly uh, growing customers. Yep. And they could be very, very small when they start with us, but what really Acumatica does is it helps them enable and grow their business. And over time, we see them growing very, very rapidly, and they have more and more employees, and they have more complex processes, and they don't want to keep switching softwares every, you know, every one year or every whatever. Yeah. So Acumatica really can tailor to different types of users and environments, and be very, very simple for a you know, very specific job, and hide away all the complexity with simple screens and mm -hmm. things like that. And then for the very a uh, deep user, an administrator in the background, or the developer who wants to really harness the special things that that company does and that makes them different than their competition, they want to be able to adapt that and program in those specific things for them, they can do that too. 
So uh, that's one of the powers of XBrain. Yeah, that's great. So then um, you're also responsible for, for what we do with our um, software as a service offering or yeah. let's use the buzzword SaaS just to keep all the buzzword junkies happy. But um, we like to be acronym free here at, uh, at Acumatica. Um, so with our software as a service offering, can you tell me a little bit about that? Who do we use and, and what's the advantage of that? Yeah, so SaaS, as you know, is software as a service, which means you want to do less and rely on us to do the work for you in the background. Because you want to focus on your business and you want to just do that. And mm -hmm. you don't want to go in the background managing servers and worrying about updates that come out and so on and so forth. So our, uh, you know, we're a fairly small growing company ourselves. And we use Acumatic internally, by the way, yes. which is very interesting. Funnily but, enough, we eat our own dog food that's or it, that's it. drink our own champagne if that's more palatable for right. you. But we don't really have servers here. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's important from a uh, mission criticality of of an ERP solution mm -hmm. that you think about uh, building a highly secure uh, uh, mission critical environment that if something were, were to happen to your premises or there was a flight, I mean we have customers that have so many stories like this where yes. they have servers in their rooms and something happens and there's a small fire or there's a flooding that happens or their server breaks you know that they had all their data on and you know they don't think about all the precautions necessary to, and they don't necessarily make the investments, yeah. or really know about what they should do. Mm -hmm. So we've invested a lot of time and energy in learning what those are, and we've partnered with the top tier uh, providers that this is what they do. This is all they think about. Mm -hmm. People like uh, Amazon, yes, uh, with their AWS services, which is basically a uh, environment, a cloud environment, where they manage all the servers for us, mm -hmm. and we deploy our products onto their environments. Right. But they think about all the pieces from a disaster recovery, segregating your data on multiple servers, backups, you know, power, uh, security guards yes. of, you know, who can access the data and, and and things like that. Yeah. So you know, we say that your data is actually safer in the cloud yes. than it is on premise. Yes. Because they think about this, and this is what they think about all that. Got it. Got it. So I mean, and, and that's one of the things I really like uh, about the Acumatica offering is that that you can take the software and you can deploy it on premise if you really if if you feel much more comfortable about being able to point to a server in the corner and say that's my data there. Not necessarily, as you said, any more secure or um, or less secure, if you like, than putting it in, into a cloud provider environment. But there's a lot more work to do around it, but then also having that idea of being able to use a private cloud and a public cloud. And so let's say I'm on the uh, east coast of, of the United States, or I'm on the west coast, as I understand it, with uh, AWS, they've got different servers in different locations. So yes. Yeah, we deploy the product uh, geographically, strategically ge geographically, based on where the customer is to right. give them the highest possible performance. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we segregate the data to multiple locations just from a safety standpoint. So right. yes, when you sign up as a customer, and if you happen to be, let's say, in the East Coast, then your data would primarily reside, your production data that you access every day and you use would reside on the East Coast. For example, in this particular one, on the East Coast, we have a data center in Northern Virginia. Yep. On the West Coast, when there's one in Oregon. Okay. But uh, just because we host you, that doesn't mean uh, that's the only place your data resides. Uh, because we want to make sure that data gets replicated into other regions mm -hmm. in case of a disaster. If something happens, God forbid, and the center goes down to dust, yes. your data is still safe because it actually takes 15-minute incremental data and puts them into these other centers. So that we can bring up another center very, very quickly, and your data is still intact. So then if anybody's thinking, what's the service level kind of agreement, or what goes on in the background that backs up the service level agreement, 15-minute incremental backups, and, and Acumatica has its own snapshot yes. functionality yes. inside the software as well, yes. right? So there's definitely multiple layers of safety. Yes. So, um, you know, at the simplest level, people think of it as just your daily backups that you do, and you take your data and you just kind of store it aside. Some people like to take it on their USB disks and take it home. Yep. Right. So you, they want to touch and feel the data. Sometimes they want that level they of can safety. Sleep with it cuddled yes. up to them on the pillow. Yes. So you know, we've learned over time that this is very actually important. As silly as it sounds, 
It's actually something that's important. It makes people feel comfortable, yes. right? Uh, so we've taken away a lot of these drawbacks that you typically have with SaaS environments. That they lock your data in, and they don't let you touch it, and they don't let you access it. You can't shift it from one place to another. And Acumatica is different in that way because we let you take that data, and it's your data. We, we treat it like yours, and we give you access to that data. And you can take a backup copy, and you can access to the backups that we do. So on the first level, we do these daily backups. There's a seven-day retention period. Right. So you have actually copies of your data for the last seven days. And we give you an, a service where you can actually access that data at any time and download it to, for your safe, own safekeeping. And then obviously we, we take those data and they're separated from your normal production database because they're housed differently, like, yeah. like I mentioned. And so that's the first layer. Then there's another layer where Amazon automatically creates uh, what we call you know, uh, machine level snapshot because these are kind of like virtual machines that sit in the cloud. So each of these virtual machines kind of get snapshotted in the background by Amazon and they get stored in case something happens, they can quickly recover mm. uh, that particular machine. Right. And then there is a uh, third level of uh, redundancy where we do these incremental backups that during the day as you use the system. And you know we're in the process of actually changing a lot of that to make it even more foolproof. But uh, these 15 minute backups basically take place. Uh, uh, there, are, there are deltas between each of the 15 minutes, so yes. we don't take the whole data and back it up every 15 minutes because that would slow down the customer. So we're, uh, we want to make sure we always have good performance with mm -hmm. the customer. So we take incremental changes and then they're st uh, separated and moved to another uh, region. Mm -hmm. And so there's multiple layers like that. Great. I mean, if you, for those of you watching this, you might be thinking, gee, that sounds like a lot of work. But I guess that's the advantage of, of, of software as a service and having your data um, hosted in that environment because we worry about all of that and, and people that's don't right. have to. That's right. And, and then one of the things that happens is because, because we, we deploy the software in many different ways. You know, it's one of the other benefits that we do. We let the people kind of tell us what they prefer, how much capabilities they have in-house. Mm -hmm. And based on their level of capability, they can choose to bring the data in the house and put it on their own servers mm -hmm. with their own IT teams. We have very large clients who do that, and that's part of their whole process. They may take the data, put it at their own hosting center, and control that remotely and still be in the cloud, but us not touching it. And then we have customers who really want to rely on us and Amazon to do a lot of the work for yeah. them. And the advantage of that is that you don't really need to know all the details. If you're a business and you want to focus on your stuff, uh, you know, sometimes people make the mistake of saying, okay, well, we know, we've know we heard that you sell this subscription-based software. We want to just do it. But I've heard hosting is very cheap. You know, you can get hosting these days for 20 bucks a month or something like that, right? So they look at us and they say, you know what, I can just take this software and put it on this cheap hosting provider and you know let it run like that. And that's true, you can do that. You can take the software and put it on one of these cheap hosting. But when you put it on the cheap hosting, you also have to think about what you're getting, right? right. So are they going to truly manage that service for you? Are they going to do the backups? Are they creating multiple copies of it for you? Yeah. Uh, so you have to dig deep a little bit more, and you have to get educated uh, in that. So we would typically recommend our small clients or people who don't want to necessarily worry about IT is to not... Uh, you know, think about that. Let us do all the work yeah. for them, and we put it on our cloud, and we manage everything for them. And then we've got partners that are very capable because um, we use the channel exclusively. And uh, if they want it to be more uh, with the relationship between the customer and the partner, the partner certainly has a lot of our partners that do hosting for us. Yep. And they can go to the, our hosting providers, and they can have the same data. Fantastic. So, I guess, <clears throat> pardon me. One of the 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 great things about this is when you say they don't have to worry about it, if you're watching this and thinking, oh, well, hang on, is this like some kind of black box that I, you know, I don't know what's going on? Well, you know, we can provide you with all of the necessary um, documentation which explains what goes on and, and, and all the certifications that the data centers go through and all that kind of thing. So I think that's an important thing to, to bear in mind. So if you want any of that information, you can reach out to certainly to me, and my email address is rduffy at acumatica.com, or visit us at uh, www.acumatica.com, and you'll see the, uh, the the URL there at the bottom of the video, uh, and we'll be happy to provide you with some of that. Let's wrap up then. You mentioned partners, and of course, we're 100% partner focused. 
If I'm a, um, a potential partner and I'm sitting there worried about my future and I'm thinking, okay, you know, the cloud is the future of, of, of software, which it is. I think we're, you know, we're now at that, we're past the inflection point where everyone says this is, this is happening. It's not just a buzzword. It's not just something that, you know, the Larry Ellisons and, and, and Bill Gates of the world stand up and have arguments on stage about it. It's here, it's happening, and people are using it every single day. As a partner, what do you think are the key things for me to think about as I make the transition from being an on-premise focused organization to starting to work with customers in the cloud? And I know that's a tough question that I put you on the spot, but that's what we do here on the couch. We like to put our guests on the spot, so yeah, uh, sure. fire away. Yeah, so, no, so partners definitely, there is a, a small learning curve that goes with switching kind of the way that you think, right? Yes. So it's, it's, it's very different. And it's in every way. It's not just in one area, you know, from how you develop software that if you're customizing it for the cloud versus if you're on-premise mm -hmm. and how you integrate it to an existing solution and those sort of things. So part of that process is making sure that you understand, you know, what, what you don't lose. You know, rule number one, don't lose what you already have, you right. know? So we really purpose build Acumatica from the ground up, thinking about all the pieces partners care about. You know, where do they have their experience? How can they customize? How can they leverage their domain knowledge with the customer? How can they use our workflow engine? So we kept a lot of the same semantics and things in the product uh, purposely so that we can leverage that uh, right. channel. So, so that was kind of, kind of a big win because when they come to us, a lot of things actually feel home for them. You know, they, right. they, they don't, when they go to other SaaS vendors, they all of a sudden feel lost. You know, they're like, oh my gosh, I used to be able to do this, I used to be able to do this. No, I can't do it. Why? So they're disconnected, right. disenfranchised, and almost locked yeah. out of the process. Yeah, so for a good example is like, how do you customize a solution and integrate it to legacy systems, right? So mm -hmm. partners are used to be able to access the data, uh, you know, writing quick queries into the system and connecting to another system and, and so on. And when they go to these other SaaS providers, they feel like, oh my gosh, it's kind of one size fits all mentality, and uh, they can't really customize it the way they want. They can't publish things on the server and things like that. So we, right. we really designed the system to get away and take all those drawbacks of tr traditional SaaS out of the way. So we give them all the tools that they're used to. In a right, so we right. made it easy, so we made it comfortable. Right. Uh, then we put together a kind of a uh, training program that helps them uh, get through and understand uh, the modernized way of programming. Cloud mm -hmm. programming, right? So a lot of these partners uh, used to use like what VBE or uh, they're used to you know standard desktop Windows programming uh, yeah. methodologies and so on. So you know it, it, over time things have matured and there's a lot of simple programs uh, that that people can go through that teaches them the differences. Right. And then we've got things like you know the tutorial guides and uh, our university that takes them through you know all these different types of courses that quickly gets them up to speed right. on what modern programming is and how our platform kind of works, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, over a period of maybe uh, one to two weeks, they start to really get the difference and hey, why this way is the better way. Mm -hmm. And once they do that, they realize how much pr more productive they can be and how much more they can accomplish in a shorter amount of time. Right. So what used to take them you know, hours and weeks and months to do, and now they can do in minutes and seconds, mm -hmm. uh, kind of the same thing. Got so it. that really helps them number one. So the next thing is, you know, how do you uh, sell the product differently? They're, they're used to this model of uh, selling the product, collecting all the money, and then doing these annual maintenances uh, with their clients. And, you know, they, they don't necessarily touch the customer as often in, in right. those kind of models. And they wait for the customer to say, okay, I also need this, and then they go and do that, and, and so on. And then they're used to you know, doing a lot of the IT work. You know, they, uh, as part of the implementation and upgrades, they have to plan these big upgrades out where they have to go through and see our, the, the new version of software is coming out. Does the hardware meet the, the specs, meet the software needs? And then they have to go and update every client machine, and they have to plan, oh my gosh, I'm still on XP, I gotta go to Windows 7. So we take all that out. So we right. let them focus on their business consultative skills. You know, you go to an accountant and, you know, you trust your accountant because 
you know, they understand your books and you, they produce your financial statements and so on, right? So similarly, the partner can focus on their uh, business skills and they can leverage all their other customers that they've built the processes out yeah. and they really start focusing on that and they come to us to say, okay, you know, guys, you, you do the update, the new version is coming out, we push a few buttons, all the stuff migrates from the old version to the new version, and then the customer goes and says, hey, let me tell you how you can leverage this new feature in your business because you know, this is going to help you sell more product, or this is going to help you be more productive, or this is going to So they start to get uh, really focused on that. So they have to change and that And further up the value chain in right. terms of what So they, they start instantly customers. thinking about, oh my gosh, you know, the, the five employees that I have that they were you know, doing these types of services, now they kind of switch and they become more consultative, uh, even more consultative roles. Mm -hmm. So they have to make that uh, shift a little bit. And then um, finally, uh, you know, because as I said, they were collecting all this money up front, they, it kind of changes their business model a little mm -hmm. bit on how their cash flow works, how their revenue over the life of the customer matters a lot more than, hey, what can I get up front? Yes. So they start to understand the stability and the benefits of recurring revenues. Uh, okay. They've had some of that with maintenance, but yes. it's been such a small portion. Typically, maintenance is 18 to 25 percent, you know, yeah. depending on the type of software you buy. Uh, but you know, with a subscription-based software, you know, everybody wins because the customer has a smaller cost to entry. Right? They can get started. They don't get locked in. They can switch. You know, once they like the software, they can own it if they want. So we have a lot of benefits like that. But still, from the, from the partner's perspective. It's also, you know, they're not sit, sitting there selling the world to the customer. Yeah. They're Got representing it. themselves. They're like, here, we're going to be in together, right? Yes. And they start building a model where they understand that over time, it's going to be both beneficial for them from a, you know, how much money they make over the years and yes. very stable revenues from year to year because every year they get the same amount, mm -hmm. maybe a little more, uh, you know, each year versus a bunch up front. Yeah. But, you know, Quickly, they learn. You know, once I have seven, eight, nine, ten customers on this platform, it starts to you know fa fairly even out after the couple of years. And then, if I have larger, more customers, then it really helps them. Got it. So everybody wins. Okay. So that's a another piece that uh, a learning curve that people go through. But uh, sounds great. But it works. So I mean, people throw around the the, the term partner a lot, uh, but I think you know what you've talked about there is very much you know the the true idea of a partner. A partner is somebody that you work together with closely. Uh, and certainly at Acumatica, uh, that's one of the things that we're focused on in, in my role as uh, VP of Partner Strategy. It's certainly the things that we look at. And, and it's great knowing that we have people like Ali and his team who are working there constantly, uh, making sure that, that you know, partners are being brought up to speed, um, being helped every single day, uh, and to make sure that you, if you are a customer or a potential customer watching this, making sure that you have the services and support in the background uh, when you need it. So, Ali, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. I appreciate you taking the time uh, to come and join me on the couch. Sure. And you can tell us more often. <laughs> yeah, you, you can tell other people in the organization when I ask them to come and join me on the couch. Uh, it's not a scary process. Yeah. And, um, and I don't bite and I don't make inappropriate advances towards you. So, thanks again. Thanks a lot.